Hello everyone. Uh, this is another game um, from the tournament that I'm uh, playing in and my rating is starting to catch up to what I actually am, um, which is a better approximation of uh, my uh, playing strength, I guess. And I'm getting close to uh, completing this tournament and um, I feel like I'm going to probably move on in the next round. Um, that being said, over the board tournaments are a lot different than playing online, um, especially when I'm dealing with uh, chess correspondence, just because uh, online games that I usually play are 30 minutes uh, with a 20 second increment, just because I can't think that fast. And with um, chess correspondence, there is really no time uh, constriction other than, uh, let's say you have three days to make a move or seven days. I think the maximum was something like 14 days to make a move. But um, definitely you spend a lot more time uh, looking at different uh, ideas and options. So I had a deja, of, um, a deja vu moment and uh, I had uh, played the King's Pawn game Dresden opening, I think that's how you pronounce it. And uh, last time I played this it was uh, when I had the white pieces and I had uh, drawn the game. And um, I believe that was in Proven Chess episode 8. Uh, if you're interested in going back and looking at that. Um, this time I had the black pieces and I had uh, had won the game. And um, we'll just uh, get into the opening. So it starts out with c4, e5, uh, e5 e4, knight c6, knight f3, bishop c5, uh, a3, d6, b4, and bishop d6. And this is where we had left the, uh, the book opening, and my opponent decided to play this move. And when I was looking at this, I noticed that, you know, I can play my knight to attack my opponent's queen, which is something that I had done. And I'm forking both the knight and the queen. Excuse me. And my opponent decides to trade off bishops, and I'm more hap more welcome to do that. And I kind of felt as though my opponent could have defended the the rook, uh, perhaps just by um, moving the dark square bishop down. And at the very least, it might be an exchange of dark square bishops. I don't know if I would accept the exchange at that point in time or not. Uh, after all, um, uh, these pieces will probably come down and try to trap my dark square bishop. Um, and the fact that uh, Perhaps uh, this square in future would not be um, all that great because my opponent does have a queen that I, I feel like it would um, bear down on this uh, square and I kind of felt like um, my opponent had a lot more firepower here than not so perhaps maybe I would ex would accept a, um, a dark square bishop exchange. But instead of defending the rook, my opponent decided to develop their light square bishop and uh, begin defending the king. And at this point in time, I thought, well, might as well take the free rook. And my opponent uh, castled kingside or short castle. And I decided to bring back my uh, dark square bishop. Now, my opponent's knight 
could come down and block my dark square bishop, which is something that I kind of feared and why I wanted to move my dark square bishop. But that being said, my opponents already lost a lot of pieces or at least a lot of material and just to sacrifice a knight uh, to get uh, they're not up the exchange they're, they're down um, uh, two points and just to start sacrificing more pieces doesn't really make sense to me but uh, that's one of the main reasons why I wanted to bring down my my dark square bishop that and I thought that um, I think some at some point in time maybe perhaps um, this square might um, help me out somehow in uh, checkmating the king but it was just something I had my eye on and uh, the game just continued and here uh, the reason why I decided to castle kingside is because there's potentially this threat locking my queen here to defend the pawn and I thought you know if I forget about this threat and start developing my queen someplace perhaps there would be a fork against my rook and my uh, king so I thought you know what just get rid of the threat completely and now I just have to worry about my rook but um, at that being said even after this uh, move my computer thought was kind of interesting and uh, confusing uh, the position is in black's favor and um, my computer had recommended perhaps just exchanging uh, the knight might be an idea And then maybe perhaps uh, Castle Kingside. And I had thought, you know, what's the purpose of maybe moving D3? And I thought, well, maybe there'd be an idea of maybe exchanging uh, Dark Square Bishop, uh, maybe sometime in the future. And also too, my opponent is pinning my, my uh, queen to the c7 pawn in order to defend it. So my computer had recommended just moving the bishop back which defends this c7 pawn for the moment. My opponent might uh, develop their king to h1 and uh, f5 was recommended. And um, the reason being, I thought perhaps this was a good idea was, well, not that it was a good idea, but the reasoning behind what my computer had suggested was, let's say we take this pawn. Now we have enough pieces in order to attack uh, the F2 square, maybe gaining a rook out of it, uh, which is, Perhaps maybe why my computer opted to uh, move kingside. I'm not quite too sure. And uh, my uh, computer had decided, had recommended perhaps taking the pawn exchange would be a good idea. Now instead of taking with the rook, my computer had thought, okay, well, uh, Perhaps the dark square bishop would be uh, much better. And as you can see here, there is, my uh, late square bishop is pinning, is pinning the queen to the pawn. So the pawn can advance to come after my dark square bishop or the queen will be lost. And that being said, I also have threats here uh, either by perhaps maybe moving the dark square bishop and activating the rook and the dark square bishop against f2. My opponent might, uh, my computer thought my opponent might defend the queen. So this pawn, this hanging 
pawn, well not hanging pawn, but this pin pawn is no longer pinned. And uh, my computer had uh, suggested perhaps moving the light square bishop to d7. And here I have a thread on f2, as well as an idea of perhaps moving my queen uh, to uh, e8 and uh, ideas of perhaps trying to capture this pawn and attack my opponent's queen. And uh, my, my opponent might move back and um, it has sufficient pieces in order to defend this pawn. Two defenders and I have two attackers. And if I move first, um, my opponent can uh, win the exchange, and then my uh, rook is, um, which is not something that I'd be in a rush to exchange, but uh, definitely I would lose uh, material for this uh, pawn if I decided to strike, which isn't a very good idea. And my computer had recommended uh, this move, allowing me to push the pawn up. And if my opponent takes, then I have the light square bishop coming up, attacking my opponent's queen. And the idea behind this move is the fact that once this pawn moves down to defend here, what are you going to do? So we've just gotten rid of that problem off the board and decided we're going to push this uh, this pawn to a6 and uh, try to attack this pawn here. I think is the idea my computer had. So the game continue. And here um, I have uh, a potential fork. And um, I thought that I'd go after my opponent's light square bishop. If my opponent decides to take the pawn, no big deal. I gain a tempo, which attacks the king, and uh, also forks the, uh, n won't fork the dark square bishop, but since we have another pawn down here, if my opponent decided to take, we have um, a double attack. So my opponent decided to take the pawn, I think with the idea of attacking my king, uh, my, not my king, my knight. And I just simply move my knight away. Now I have a double attack. I'm attacking my opponent's king and also attacking my opponent's dark square bishop, which will also open up uh, uh, advantages for my queen. And um, here as well, I get a tempo because my opponent has to move the king to safety. So then I can just uh, take the dark square bishop. And that's what my opponent does. And now I have ideas of coming down and attacking my opponent's queen, which is something that I uh, decided to play. And I thought this was a pretty good move. And my computer finds this kind of an interesting move and um, finds that uh, my position is um, a lot better. And uh, my computer had suggested perhaps uh, knight f4 was the better option. And as you can see here, um, I have ideas of using my queen to come up and take the pawn, which is defended by my knight. Perhaps a queen exchange might happen. Uh, that's one idea. I also had other ideas of moving my queen to uh, g5, attacking this pawn here, and um, perhaps with the idea of... Um, even bringing my light square bishop down here. Um, 
so if my opponent, let's say, decides to push uh, this pawn down, um, you know, I can move my light square bishop up, attacking the rook. The rook might come over to defend, and then I have to find uh, some place to uh, defend my uh, knight. So my computer had suggested perhaps d4 might happen. And I think the idea behind this is, you know, moving the rook to uh, d1, perhaps maybe opening uh, the d file up, putting pressure on my queen, and uh, perhaps gaining a pawn in the process. So my computer had uh, recommended exchanging pawns. Uh, my computer had suggested f3, defending uh, my opponent's pawn here, which frees up my opponent's queen. And my computer suggested pushing d3, attacking my opponent's queen. My opponent comes back to defend the queen, putting uh, pressure on my knight. And I thought, you know, perhaps the queen comes up eyeballing this pawn. Uh, perhaps maybe the pawn uh, might advance uh, in that case and attacking the knight. Uh, that being said, um, I might I'd probably lose the queen if that happened. But nonetheless, I did have ideas of uh, perhaps playing this move at some point in time. I just, if I'm, I just don't know what I would um, uh, do. Uh, but, you know, coming down with a pawn, I think would be a really good idea because then my queen is pinning my knight to my queen and then you know the um, pawn comes down putting pressure on my queen would be really good idea so uh, perhaps we can rule out that idea uh, which also rules out the idea of perhaps um, putting my uh, light square bishop here attacking the rook And these are, you know, kind of all ideas I had. And it's just something that you kind of go through and you think, okay, so what, what is the outcome? What can my opponent do uh, to, um, to circumvent my ideas and make them, um, make me want, uh, have to defend and lose the initiative and have my opponent uh, gain the initiative. And... You know, from this position here, uh, the queen could come up and defend the the knight, which would probably be a lot uh, better idea. So then, if my opponent does come down to push the pawn, the knight can run away someplace to a safer square. Um, but you know, these are you know all different things you look at, try to come up with better ideas and stuff like that, and. Uh, just because you find a bad idea, you know, at least you're thinking and you're learning about uh, calculation and the more you do it, you get better at it. So my computer had recommended defending the knight. And as we had seen before, uh, the possibility of this pawn coming down, attacking this knight. So now we've gotten rid of uh, that threat. My opponent might come down and... Uh, put pressure on this pawn threatening to win it because it has one two uh, attackers and I only have one defender my uh, rook my computer thought my rook might come over in order to defend this pawn so now my opponent has to come up and find another um, attacker for this square in order to win the pawn and another, I guess, good thing about this for um, black is the fact that, you know, the queen and the rook are busy uh, trying to attack this 
square but eventually you know my opponent will have to either choose the queen or the rook in order to uh, perhaps develop uh, somewhere else and um, still in all you know this idea uh, is probably a pretty good idea trying to chase the knight away so you know this becomes a threat for black again and um, here uh, my computer decides um, attacking the knight would be a good idea chasing the knight away and uh, now this pawn is under threat again two attackers and one defender and that being said too perhaps there would be a long-term idea of um, bringing the queen over here in order to uh, try to checkmate checkmate my opponent but you know after um, and that wouldn't be a good idea here uh, my opponent is probably going to have to move the queen someplace. Maybe move it here. And um, maybe go after this pawn. And, you know, my per perhaps my queen would come up and we would uh, be back where we started. Uh, my uh, computer thought maybe... Uh, King G2 would be an idea and as I had said before you know I had long-term ideas about checkmate here so from here I think this would be an easier position to defend uh, just because um, my opponent does have two, two um, defenders and my king is safe because of my uh, light square bishop, so I don't have to worry about defending it. So my idea of coming over here in the long term uh, probably isn't very good at this point in time. Uh, something that one should probably avoid. And uh, my computer had recommended uh, a6. You know, trying to uh, win the pawn. And in future, you know, perhaps take the A3 pawn and help uh, defend um, uh, defend this pawn, perhaps. But we'll go back to the game. And uh, this is an idea I had. I thought, you know, um, I'm eyeballing this pawn. I'm trying to come up with ways of, okay, so how do I kind of make my opponent want to move this pawn? I'm not too sure at this point in time, but if my opponent did advance this pawn, uh, there would be an idea of maybe bringing the light square bishop up attacking the rook. but I'm not too sure as to uh, what would make my opponent want to move that piece. And uh, my opponent decided to play a4 and I had ideas of taking the pawn, you know, uh, this pawn is in threat, so perhaps we'd have an exchange of pawns and um, I wouldn't be able to win this pawn back because of my opponent's pawn chain. But I'd have the ability to control the A-file uh, with my rook. My opponent might play H3. Oh, sorry. This is... Sorry. These are my moves. I Sorry, I lost track of what I was doing here. I do sincerely apologize. So my opponent played this move and I opted to play this move. And the reason behind it was the fact that if my opponent decided to come down here, which would be a blunder, 
you know, late square bishop comes up at my, and uh, I'm pinning my opponent's king because of this pawn here defending. Uh, so I could probably win the queen quite easily. Um, I'd have to be wary of uh, the pawn push here on um, g3, uh, attacking my queen. But then that being said, you just simply move the queen up and take the pawn. So the game continued. And uh, I opted to take the pawn. Um, right now, my late square bishop is defending my opponent's king. My, put, my opponent could take the late square bishop, but then my queen comes up, and my opponent would be faced to uh, move uh, king side. And. Uh, then my knight just simply comes up and um, checkmates the king. So my opponent played this move, and I opted just to uh, move my light square bishop back, gaining a tempo because my uh, opponent has to defend their king. I do have this move here with my knight, so if my opponent comes over trying to defend the king, my knight can come up and attack the king. Um, so my opponent would have to sacrifice the queen in order to save the king, and my light square bishop would come up attacking my opponent's king, uh, king rook, uh, sorry. So here, as I had shown you before, my knight is attacking the king, and um, my opponent has no other option other than to defend, and I take the free uh, queen. My opponent came over and attacked my late square bishop, and I just thought, well, I just start snatching pawns up and um, perhaps uh, in the process try to move these pawns uh, up the board maybe try to get them to promote but um, after uh, I played this move my computer had um, said that there was a mate in eight and unfortunately I can't calculate that far ahead. So if you'd like to see what my computer thought the end of the game would be, um, I'll show you the variation uh, here because I did take the uh, pawn with the bishop. And um, I also could have uh, played this move here uh, perhaps um, with the idea of maybe uh, taking the pawn, sacrificing my light square bishop, and um, moving my rook over, uh, uh, moving my rook over so I have double uh, rooks, and perhaps directly attacking the king. And that being said, I feel like these pawns are going to fall and um, perhaps I would uh, start pushing my, uh, try to figure out a way to start pushing my lights, my, my uh, pawns up the board in order to promote. So we'll show you this variation because I did take the bishop, uh, take the pawn with a bishop and this is how the game might have uh, continued on. And there you have it. 
um, that's the way my computer figured that the game would uh, conclude. And um, I'd like to thank all my subscribers for uh, subscribing. Uh, if you've liked what I've done, uh, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, comments are always uh, welcome in the comment uh, box. I'm always interested to uh, find out what uh, people uh, think of my videos and the channel in general. And um, I look forward to uh, uh, seeing, you in a uh, seeing, uh, seeing you next time. Bye for now.